Good morning, boys and girls. Would you stand up and sing with me? We are going to start with our books of the Bible. And our verse today comes from Ephesians. So listen really well. When you hear Ephesians, we're going to do a little dance. All right? The books of the Bible, time-tested and reliable. Scripture has a power that's undeniable. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, and Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, and Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, the books of the Bible, their wisdom's verifiable. Scripture has a power that's undeniable. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Romans, 1st Corinthians, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians 1 and 2, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd John, 3rd John, Jude and Revelation, the books of the Bible, time tested and reliable. Now you know all 66 books of the Bible. Nice job, boys and girls. We are going to sing a song that we started last year called Love the Lord with all, uh, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your, and all of your, good. Lord, 
your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. I will serve you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will serve you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength, with all my heart. good memory from last year and we are going to end with our song of the month if you can believe it this is the last chapel we have in september so next week we will have a new song of the month who am i that the highest king would welcome me i was lost but he
Rose, you did a great job this morning. Please take a seat. Good morning, guys. I love, love being able to worship with you. It is just such a highlight of my week every week. Now, I want to see who can remember what book, our verse that we've learned in September. What book of the Bible does it come from? Do you remember? Her? Oh, John. Oh, yep, John one twelve. Sorry, I was a little muffled. Excellent. So you not even remembered the book of the Bible. You remembered the whole reference, John one twelve. And I want you guys to see, can you say it with me? Okay, I don't have it up on the screen today, so it's going to be all from memory. So let's see what you say. Yet to all received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. What a privilege it is that we can become God's children. Well, today our chapel speaker is our founder and superintendent, Dr. White, and he is going to come and share with you a little bit of message that, that God gave him about what it means to be a child of God. So before he comes, will you guys join me in praying for him? God, I thank you so much that you have given us the opportunity to become your child. And God, I pray that we will open our minds and hearts to receive that, that we will believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross for our sins, and that we need him to be our Savior, Lord, so we can become your sons and your daughters. Thank you for loving us so much that you gave us that as an opportunity. We love you so much. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. All right, and now Dr. White's going to come. Well, good morning. Good morning. Oh, you can say it better than that. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. That's much better. And for those of you that are in the classrooms watching, I hope you spoke up just as well and that uh, you're participating as we're participating here in chapel. I want to speak to you this morning for just a few minutes. Tracy, what time do we finish? Okay, that's great. We're fine. Um, I want to I read a verse of scripture to you, and your theme this year, talking about being a child of God, I thought this would be a great time for me to share something that you probably don't even know about me or my family, but I thought it would fit in with this scripture and with your theme. So listen carefully to Ephesians. You said that a minute ago up on the screen, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4. Listen carefully. It says, For he, talking about God, chose us in Jesus before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Listen carefully. In love, he chose us to be adopted as his children through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. This, this verse of scripture right here uses a term called adopted. And uh, I thought as I read that passage and I thought about your theme, I thought I would share this with you. When I was in school, I'm going to go back farther. When I was born, just as a little boy, um, I was about five years old. And I found out that I was going to have a baby sister. And she was about five years younger, and so when she was born, we kind of grew up together as five years apart. How many of you have brothers and sisters? May I see your hand? Great. And so her name was Regina. That was my sister's name. Beverly Regina was her name. And so we went along for, oh, I don't know, I guess it was about another five or six years. And uh, during that five or six years, my family was in a church where we... Every Sunday, we chose a family that we would bring home with us to eat with us and to fellowship and so forth. And so we chose a lady that we knew was really having a hard time. She was having a hard time even feeding herself and her children. She had lost her job. She had lost a lot. And so um, we found out one Sunday morning when she was with us that afternoon that she was expecting a baby. And instead of being excited about it, she seemed to be really worried about it. And so we went on several weeks, and she came back to our house, and we kind of started 
ministering to her. We, we started kind of taking care of her, and my mom would go pick her up during the week, and she'd go buy her some clothes, and dad would provide some money sometimes for utility bills just to help her out in a really tough time. So it was my dad, my mom, me, and my sister. And this lady had this precious little baby girl, and she was trying to take care of her the best she could, but she just wasn't able to do it. And we kept going over to the house and trying to help, and it just didn't work. And after about, I guess it must have been about 18 weeks, she said to my mother, I would like for you to take my baby girl. And we're like, what? And she says, I would like for you to take her into your family because I can never provide for her what she needs. And that was a really strong statement from a mom. And she said, I'm not giving her up. I'm only loaning her to you so that she will grow up in a family like yours. And so we went through a process called adoption. And what that meant was is that we went before a judge and we said we are willing to adopt this little girl into our family, make her our sister in our family. At the same time, her mother knew about her and was able to visit with her all the way through her lifetime. But we adopted, and so my third sister, or my second sister, was Sandy, Sandy Kay. And Sandy Kay began to grow up in her home, and she also was about five years apart from my sister. And so we were like five years apart in groups. Sandy became really close to me. She was, I was her big brother, and Sandy was my little sister. And uh, Regina and Sandy got along well. We all got along. But we literally adopted her into our family. And we were convinced after we went for a while that God had intended it just that way, that God knew that that mom was not going to be able to take care of that little girl. Uh, in fact, what we didn't know was that mom, in just several years after that, was going to have a disease and pass away. She died. And then we really realized why God had placed Sandy in our family. And so when she joined our family, Sandy joined our family and had all the same privileges that I did and Regina did. She became just like us. She was brought into our family. She was treated like family. She was fed like family. She was provided clothes like family. All the things that we got, she got. And you know what? It was really funny. As Sandy got older, people would confuse the fact that they thought Sandy was my birth sister and my birth sister was my adopted sister because she fit in so well. Well, that's kind of a picture of what Jesus, what God is saying to us in this verse. God is saying that before the creation, before he created things, he chose you and I to be in Jesus and to be adopted into the family of God. And that meant that when you and I were adopted into that family of God, he brought us in as his children, just like Jesus. Jesus was his son. So we were brought into that family just like Jesus. We had the same standing as Jesus did. And he guaranteed us the same things, eternal life and peace and joy as we go through our life. And so we were adopted into the family of God. There's a verse of scripture over in Romans. It's in chapter 8, verse 23, I believe it is. It says that we all are waiting. We are waiting for Jesus to return so that our adoption is complete. That means that when Jesus Christ comes back to receive his children, that you and I will be reunited with Jesus in a very special physical way and that our adoption will be complete. You see, when we brought Sandy into our family, we stood before a judge and we said we wanted her to be part of our family and she was adopted. But do you know that it took two years before the judge finally put his seal on the papers and said she is indeed part of the white family. And that's kind of what this verse is talking about. We've been adopted, chosen by God to be part of his family through Jesus Christ. 
But then he says, one day Jesus will come back, and when he comes back, that will be like when the judge put his seal on the paper. Our adoption will be complete. We will no longer be classified as adopted. We will be classified as children, as his children. We're in the family for eternity. And that's kind of the picture there of Ephesians. So some of the questions that came up when Sandy was in our family is people would say, Which, does she act like your family? Yes. Does she get angry like your family sometimes? Yes, she had her times that she got angry. Did she do anything wrong like your other sister? Yes, she did things wrong like my other sister. And so as we progress through her lifetime, we watch Sandy be just like our family. She became more like our family the more she was in our family. Now, that's the way you and I are to be in Jesus' family. We are not to be his children and then not act like his children. We are not to be his children and never... Does that mean you're never going to do anything wrong? No, it doesn't mean that. Does it mean you're not going to maybe be unhappy, unkind with somebody sometime? No, it doesn't mean that. What it means is, is that you are going to be his child no matter. It's just like with Sandy, my little sister. If she did something wrong, we didn't all back off and say, well, you're not in this family. That's why you're acting that way. No, no, no. She was very much in our family and very much like our family, and took on all the characteristics of our family. But she did things that were wrong, too, and we, she had to be corrected, just like I was corrected or my sister was corrected. And so what I want you to know is when you're studying this theme that I am a child of God, that means that God chose you even before he created you, that he wanted you in the family, and that someday when Jesus returns, Jesus is going to make you, finally, that stamp of approval is going to be put on that document to say, these are my children. These are my children. So what does that mean for you and I? What, what that means is that you and I inherit all the things that Jesus inherited. We inherit heaven. We inherit eternal life. We inherit the ability right now while we're on this earth to bow our head and talk to Jesus just like you talk to a brother or a sister in your home, we've got that ability to do that with Jesus. And so he gives us a lot of things that we get because he has adopted us as his children. So what a neat thing to do. You know, my sister died when she was fairly young. And I today, even today, miss her like I miss my older sister. Both of my sisters are gone. They're in heaven today. And, you know, my family, all my mom, my dad have all passed away. My sisters have passed away. It's only me left. But you know what? They're all my family. I know that one of these days, if Jesus comes back before I pass away, I'm going to get to rejoin my family. And we're going to have family time again. And that's kind of the picture for you and I with Jesus. Even though Jesus has died, been resurrected, and gone away into heaven, you and I someday are going to join him and the family will be brought back together again. That is quite a privilege for you and I as just human beings to be rejoined to Jesus Christ, part of the Godhead, just like God. And we'll all be joined together and he will treat us just like his children. Isn't that a special thing? That's a very special thing. I remember when my sister was growing up, my little sister Sandy, she used to come get in the bed with me. And she'd come in and she, she'd sneak in. It would be dark and it would be maybe five or six in the morning and she'd wake up and she'd kind of tiptoe down the hall. I could hear her coming and then she'd come in and she didn't turn on the light. She just kind of came in and she'd, ease up under the cover and then she'd curl up against the back of me because I made her warm I think and she really enjoyed doing that and you know it was really funny even after I was in high school when I went away to college one of the first things she said to me is I miss being able to just come in your room and curl up in the bed with you that's the way we ought to be with Jesus 
We ought to be so familiar with Jesus and we ought to love him so much that when we talk about Jesus, when we go to him in prayer, we ought to have that comfort level that says, when we don't get to do that, I miss Jesus. So let me ask you a question this morning. Do you ever miss Jesus in your life? Do you ever miss him? Or do we do things sometimes that we say, the last thing I want to do right now is see Jesus. I remember one time, Sandy had broken a dish that was my mother's. And only Sandy and I knew about it. And I went in and swept the dish up and cleaned it up and threw it in the trash and carried the trash out. And so only Sandy and I knew about that dish, or at least we thought. One night we were sitting at the table, and my mother was putting out food, and she said, I wonder what happened to my blue dish. And I looked across the table at Sandy, and she looked at me, and we both were like, we're not saying anything. And it got really quiet, and then all of a sudden my mother started laughing. She said, Sandy, I know you broke my blue dish, and Ronnie, I know you cleaned it up. And we both were like, how does she know that? And I said, Mom, how did you know that? And she said, well, because I went to carry out stuff to the trash that afternoon, and there was my blue dish in the trash can that you had carried out, and there were pieces of it that came out of the bag. And so I knew that you had done And she said, I thought about it that morning, and I remember hearing something loud, but I never could figure out what it was. She said, when I saw the blue dish in the trash can, I knew exactly what had happened. And I said to her, I said, why have you not said anything? And she said, well, the blue dish was important to me, but the blue dish was not near as important to me as you and Sandy are. And that's kind of another picture of Jesus, even when you and I do something that's not correct. He doesn't just shove us away. He's just quiet for a while, and he lets us think about it. And what does he want from us? He wants you and I to say, Jesus, what I did was wrong, and I'm sorry. And that's what Sandy and I said at the table that day. We said, Mom, we're really sorry. And Sandy said, I didn't mean to break the dish. It slipped out of my hand. And my mom said, Sandy, I know you didn't mean to break the dish because you like the dish like I did. But that dish is not as important to me as you are. And so she reestablished the fact that there was nothing that Sandy and I could do that would escape my mother's love. And I think that's the last point I want to end with today. There's nothing that you and I do, even when we do things that are really crazy or really wrong, there's nothing we do that takes away the love of Jesus for us. Jesus loves you, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. It's always there. It never goes away. Once we are his child, we are in the family. And the family does not end because we do something wrong or we do something crazy. But what he does do, like my mom did, is every once in a while Jesus will bring up in our minds and in our hearts and say, do you remember when you were really ugly to that young man on the playground? Or do you remember when you were really ugly to that other little girl? You really need to make that right. And that's kind of the way he works in his family as he will say to us, you, you need to admit that what you did was wrong and ask forgiveness. And you ask forgiveness, and once you ask forgiveness, he forgives us, and then it's gone. It's forever gone. So I want you to remember as you leave here in just a few moments that you're in the family. God has chosen you to be in the family. We are his children, and we will always be his children, and his love will never go away. It will never go away. Let's pray. Father, thank you today for your love for each of us. Lord, it is so important for us to realize that nothing separates us from your love. Lord, just like in a real family here on this earth, sometimes we do things that makes us feel a little bit at odds with the family. Maybe we did something we're trying to cover it up or hide it. But Lord, really and truly, our parents almost always know. Lord, just as you know. Lord, you have told us that your eyes go to and fro upon the earth, observing both the good and the evil of men and women. So, Lord, there's nothing that 
we can do. There's nothing that these children can do. There's nothing that these teachers can do that you're not aware of because we're in your family. We are your child, and you know us better than anyone knows us. So, Lord, help us as we go through our day to realize that we, we experience joy and peace and happiness because we're in your family. And, Lord, when things are not so good, when, they're, when they seem to not be going so well, we're still in your family. And, Lord, just like our parents do sometimes, they open their arms and say, come here. And, Lord, you open your arms to us and say, come here. You're fine. You're okay. You're still my child. Lord, what a comfort that is to know today that we are your children and that we are always going to be your children. Thank you for this time you've given us today in chapel. Would you bless these young people as they go back to their classes? Bless those that are in the classes this morning watching by the uh, TV or by the screen. And Lord, that they too will realize they're your children. And we'll commit this day to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ms. Cox? Can you all say thank you to Dr. White for being here today? All right, what a privilege it was and how neat it is to hear about his family and the way that we can understand in our own family relationships how that really relates to us being part of God's family and how much he loves us and how much he wants us to be his children. All right, we're going to go ahead and dismiss and head back to class. So those of you in your classroom, have a great rest of your day. Those of you here, have a great rest of your day. We'll